Hey guys, what's going on? This is Mac, and welcome to a brand new series I'm introducing to my channel, and that is Jack and Dexter, the Precursor Legacy. I cannot begin to explain how excited I am to finally be able to record this game. I have tried an emulator on my computer, but it was, my computer isn't powerful enough for that, and there were some weird texture glitches. I got my Elgato, but then there was HDCP protection on the PS3 I bought. A C well splitter, but that did not bypass the encryption. Then I had to return that splitter and buy a VHD splitter. And that finally allowed me to bring this game to you all. Uh, Jack and Dexter is very close and near and dear to my heart. It was the it was one of the first two games I got with my PS2. When I first bought my PS2 back in like 2001, 2002, whenever it was, at the same time I got Jack and Dexter and Kingdom Hearts. So, Dragon Dex was my first PS2 game, and then when I found out back in, what was it, 2011, 2012-ish, when there were going to be remastered versions for the PlayStation 3, that was enough to convince me to buy the PlayStation 3. So this game is a literal reason that I have a PS3 right now. And today we're starting Let's Play on it, and I'm really excited. Um, the deal with this is that we are going to be doing a 100% playthrough. That means every power cell and every precursor orb in the game. That's that's it. There's, there's 2,000 precursor orbs and 101 power cells. And then there's 112 scout flies, but you need the scout flies to get the power cells. So it's going to be 100% all the way through. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to press start and load a new game up. And this game does not have subtitles. So, for the opening cutscene, and for most of the tutorial stage, I'm not going to be talking. So, let's just get into it. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose, and why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey! Uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. 
The sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! Do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man. Are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there before I turn you both into ferns. All right, so now we have a basic premise of the storyline of this game is going to be all about. Um, our main mission is to collect power cells to head north so we can get this our orange buddy on our shoulder here back to normal. Um, again, this is a tutorial area, so there's going to be this little pod that jumps out right this there. Is a communicator. With I'll just it, let it talk. I can give you advice at any time during your quest. So whenever that thing pops out and whenever there is a important cutscene, I'm going to not talk so that you guys can all get the full experience as if you had never played this game before. Um, I'm thinking that these episodes are going to be about half an hour long instead of my usual 20. Um, but these yeah. floating egg-shaped things are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. So here's are the precursor orbs I mentioned. Um, there are a set amount of them in each area. Um, in this one, there are 50. Again, out of 2,000. Um, we are going to be collecting every power cell. Not power cell. Well, yes, power cell, but every precursor orb in every area. Speaking of power cells. This is a power cell. The most important precursor artifact you can find. Collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A-Grab Zoomer. 
So there are those. Um, okay. Alright. Okay. Guys. Guys. Listen to me. Alright? Are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this. Are you ready for this? Oh, I rolled the wrong way. Damn it. Anyways. Here we go. How is this? Actually, you know what? Um, is there... Yes, that's fine. Um, options. Um... There's probably not a way to turn autosave off, is there? No, there's not. Oh, crap. Um, say fall. No. I'm not going to mess anything up. I was going to turn autosave off in case I screw up an episode and have to go back in my game and redo it, but... Let's just hope it's flawless. So with these blue and red boxes, you can only break them by doing the diving punch. That's the only way you can break them. You, well, I mean, that's one of the ways you can break them. There's other ways, but we'll get to those as the game later progresses. And when you collect all seven in the area, they spit out a power cell. What do you know? So this is a very important game mechanic that's going to be explained, so I'm not going to talk. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. So th this stuff here is called Eco, if you did not just get that from the little explanation. Um, there are four different types of eco in the game. Each blue eco cluster you pick up increases the time you can use its power. Uh -huh. So there are four types of eco. And this isn't one of them. Um, I'll give a brief explanation of how each one is used when they appear. If the game doesn't do that already. There's, you can do jump, spin kick, normal spin kick, punch, ground pound, and an uppercut, double jump, roll, up, oh, explanation time. This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling blue ego through your body. So here's another thing. Um, anything with that blue lightning symbol on it means it can be activated with the blue stuff. Which is here. That's a blue eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters. This vent will give you a full charge of blue eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. So in terms of the amount of eco you get, um, a vent equates to about four clusters that you would find just lying around everywhere. Which is nice, because it means it lasts longer. Which is again just explaining that you can use it to power stuff. Here's another eco explanation. Those little green balls of energy on the ground are a type of eco. Pick up 50 small green ecos or one big green one to increase your health. Oh, so if you had noticed um, before that explanation, I had been picking up those green things uh, everywhere. That's basically your health. You can see up in the top left corner that there's a little hearts with three sections in the number 50. This is just explaining double jump. Um, so yeah, 50 out of 50 precursor orbs for Geyser Rock. And what I was mentioning before with the health, um, the default is three, but if you collect 50 small green pieces, that is essentially a fourth um, hit point. And 
All things aside, that's our last power cell for the area. We have... This is, what, this is gonna be our goal for every area. We have every power cell, every precursor orb, and every scout fly. And you can see this is only 4% of the game. Um, the percentage down there is for item completion, not necessarily game progress. So you can complete the final boss, so you can get to the final boss of the game, but still have like 85% because you haven't collected every power cell or precursor orb. Um, and this is going to be another cutscene, so I'm going to shut up. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. And then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! Alright, and now we are free to explore the area. Um, let's continue over to Sandover Village. Alright, so now if you still are a bit up in the air on what this game is all about, um, one of the more simpler explanations I can give is that this is... It looks like scout flies, flies are always, always in, in red, red boxes. boxes. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. Um, this game is pretty much um, Super Mario 64, but it's open world, which means there are no loading screens. Everything is connected fluidly and seamlessly, which is amazing. Um, in Mario 64, you would have to jump through paintings and wait for the world to load, the limited area to load. Um, but in this one, it's all seamless. You can go from Saint Louis Village to the beach to the forest without any loading screens or going through any doors or nothing, which is great. Um, the closest thing to a loading screen you'll get is like the half-second black screen that appears um, when you go through the warp gate. But um. While we're here in the village, let's go talk to some of the villagers, shall we? Well, uh, hello there, my dear boy. You caught me at a most inopportune moment. Uh, I was to set off on my journey yesterday, but I seem to be a spot short on the old precursor orbs. I would have pledged my word that I had 90 of them, but I gather that your young friend, you know, the little, annoying, miserably ugly one, might have just pilfered them as a sort of a spot of fun. Anyway, uh, would you be kind enough to loan your dear old uncle 90 precursor orbs so he can get underway? I would offer you a power cell in return. So that's pretty much how you get power cells from other people. Well, it's one of the ways, and that's to trade them 90 precursor orbs. Um, you could also do other various tasks to get them. Um, this person here is a good example of that. Oh, don't tell me that you two have problems as well. The, the first I hear of monster sightings near the village, and now this. See those gears up there, boy. See them? See how they're not moving? That means our village has no power. The eco beam coming from the jungle temple has been interrupted. And boys, everyone's too frightened to go out and, and find out what's happened. Did you pay the bill? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, 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 you're funny. Now look, if you two fix the eco beam, I'll give you a power cell. Oh, oh and, and another thing. If by any chance you're interested in making a contribution to my re-election campaign, I, I might be willing to part with yet another power cell. The minimum contribution is a, oh, a very modest 90 precursor orbs. So power cells are also used to bribe us into doing stuff for other people. 
that's a thing. Here's another person. Let's talk to her. Oh my, what a horribly sick little bird. <laughs> you don't look so good yourself, lady. Oh, sorry. I thought you were a spotted orange-bellied rain freak. You know, yesterday I saw some terribly vicious creatures capture a mother flut flut near the beach. Now there's this poor little orphan egg sitting in a nest at the top of the cliff, and I can't get to it. If you could climb up there and push it off, I've piled some hay down at the base to catch it safely. Do an old lady a favor, and I'll give you a power cell. All right, so, so far we've got a task in the beach and a task in the jungle. Um, and all, of course, we have the uh, trading of cursor orbs for power cells. Um, so the game first wants us to go to the beach as kind of the beginning area, but due to certain events that will happen in the game, we want to go to the jungle first. After we talk to this old man. Gotta milk those yak cows. Gotta milk those yak cows. Oh, it's you. Oh, just resting my tired bones. I've been trying to get those unre yak cows back into the pen all day. Some strange creatures tried to steal them earlier. You think you could help an old man try to get them back into the corral? So here's another bribey task for a power set we're gonna do. But yeah, we're going to be doing the Forbidden Jungle after I collect the scout flies and get these yakos in the pin. Just for fluency in doing the other areas. Um, I'm not actually going to be trading the Precursor Orbs or Power Cells until right before we have to go to Fire Canyon with um, to progress to the next uh, area. Um, that's because I want to be able to get all the orb trading done in one fluid motion, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, I want to be able to do them all right in a row. So we're going to hold those off until I know we have enough power cells. Not power cells, precursor orbs. We'll start with the peak and some slack guys. Come on. Um, get along, little doggies. There should be five. Oh, come on. Is that it? No, there's one more somewhere. Where's he at? No, it's over here. That's weird. There normally isn't one over here. Oh, okay. okay. Come on, get in there. There we go. That lazy farmer owes us a power cell. Let's go talk to him. Yes, let's. Ah, oh, well done, my boy. You actually got those flea bags back into the pen. Now I can sleep in peace. Take this power cell for your trouble. So there we go, another power cell from the farmer. Um, up here is Fire Canyon. This is where we will go after we get the required 20. Excuse me. Where after we get the required 20 power cells. Um, we can't do anything here just yet, but there's Fire Canyon. Um, once we get 20 power cells, the zoomer will appear on that telepad, and we'll be able to continue on that way. But because we're doing a 100% playthrough of this game, we're going to have about 30... Somewhere around 30 power cells before we actually head over there. And it's going to get annoying because as soon as we have 20, we're going to be told like several times to go over there. But we're just going to ignore them. Oh, come on. I know we can grab that ledge. There you go. There's a scout fly. Wow! Check out that funky sculpture. Just sitting on the rocks over there. So here's another thing, we're going to have to trade precursor orbs for power, for power cells. Speaking of power cells... Yeah, yeah. Alright! 
You found all, all the, the bone saws in this area. area. Yes, I did. This must be a precursor oracle like the sage always goes all about. I hope they weren't as ugly in person. That's your own opinion. Awakens the oracle. Wait, one of you has the light within. From before time, I have watched and waited for the true hero to return. Present to me 120 precursor orbs for each power cell I contain. So there's like three of these things scattered around the world, and each one requires 120 per power cell. So because of that, there's going to be a pretty hefty dip in our power cell funds. Um, but there's probably one more NPC we got to talk to. Um, he he's not a trade uh, power cell. He's a task power cell, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, this guy over here. Hey, little furry dude. Oh. I thought for a moment you were my muse. You're what? Haven't you ever seen a muse before? It's a little glowing squirrel about your size, full of spunk, and crazy as a lark. Oh, I get it. Like a sidekick. As a matter of fact, without my muse, I just can't sculpt. But with her around, I see beauty in everything, you know? Right now, I couldn't chisel my way out of a box. I think she ran away to that misty island. Oh, I just hope she's all right. It's worth a power cell if you bring her back to me. Wait a minute! We are not going back to Misty Island! Are we? Yes, we are, but not right now. Um, we actually do something in the jungle before we can go to Misty Island, which is again why I want to do the jungle first. Um, going to the jungle first allows me to collect all the power cells in the beach in one sitting, and it allows us to go to Misty Island after a certain point. So we're going to head over there now. Um, that was every NPC in the village, so... Oh, it's a tree for a power cell. Of course Let's we have. We're not going to just yet. Um, I know this is Forbidden Jungle, but these last six orbs back here count towards uh, the village for whatever reason. So there's 50 out of 50 for Sandover Village. Um, the only thing we have to do in the village is trade power, is trade orbs, and complete tasks. Um, wrong button. Yeah, 90 orbs for the mayor, to your uncle, uh, 120 for the, the oracle. Uh, Fire Canyon, that's just uh, scout flies and get to the last area. But, um, there's nothing more to do in Sandover Village for the time being, um, but we will be going to the Forbidden Jungle next, which is right beyond this bridge. But before we do that, I think I'm going to end the episode off here. Um, I'm going to do around 25 to 30 minutes per episode. This is running at about 28 at the moment. So I'm going to cut it off here. Um, I'll try to do an area per episode, just to keep it together, if that makes sense. So we're going to end it off with Precursor Orbs of, of 100, Power Cells of 6, and Scout Flies of 14. Mac has completed 6% of the game, and I hope you do too. Have a good day.